there are certain channels out there on YouTube that literally will take every streamer's content and will re-upload it in the exact same way that I'm talking about. And they constantly, constantly get me in trouble. They get Charlie in trouble, even though most people don't yell at Charlie because, you know, Charlie is, is beloved and well-liked and he's a YouTube first content creator. But it is fucking ridiculous. Typical. I, I here's a here's a tweet that popped off. So Neo Neo explains this video shows HC reacting to my video. He leaves the room for five seconds to the video and then returns ten minutes later making a mockery out of the fact that he's not reacting. Okay? That video went viral. Everyone is like uh eating XQC's ass and trying to eat my ass in the in uh as well. This guy goes, except for Jerma, I've never seen anything good posted about popular streamers. They radiate the same energy as the Paul Brothers in 2017 with everything you hear about them being purely negative. Okay? So I have a take on this, which is, yeah, of course everything you hear about streamers is negative because people fucking clout farm. Like, if you if you look at Twitter to understand what I do here, I am sex trafficking children, apparently, and also murdering my editors while simultaneously uh, playing YouTube videos and leaving, okay? That's... People just straight up lie. Newsflash. Nobody wants to watch eight fucking hours of content, which is understandable. And turns out if you're live for eight hours, then you can very clearly clip uh, shit out of context and make it seem like uh, this is an ongoing thing. So, yeah, obviously you're going to hear things that are negative. Your screech and Elwig is Zach Morris. I'm sorry. This is the storyline. I don't know what that is. And uh, it, it's a, a deeply frustrating uh, thing, but it is what it is. It's like, yeah, guess what, dude? Of course, you're not going to hear when this community raises $1.7 million for the earthquake victims in Turkey and Syria, because that's not that's not hot for Twitter. That's not that shit will never you will never hear about that. You'll never hear that uh, this community is one of the largest individual donors of the Amazon labor union, because that's not hot for Twitter. Like, that's it. And people just constantly, one of the things that is always frustrating to me is like, people look at Twitter and they're like, yeah, all I hear about these guys are that they're fucking giant pieces of shit. It's like, yeah, of course you think that we're giant pieces of shit because you're just only looking at Twitter. And I don't expect you, you know, I, I don't expect you to like actually sit through anything, but just like have a little bit more media literacy and recognize that a lot of shit that bangs on Twitter is negative stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, only bad stuff uh, hits the news uh, aggressively. So, so um, that's the reason why you only hear like Germa is a wonderful uh, beacon of light in this space. I do agree. He's very creative. He's bold. He's great. But ultimately, the reason, but the reason why you don't hear about uh, bad things about Jerma is because, you know, he, he streams, he exclusively does like creative stuff that pushes the boundaries, but he is not like, he's insane. It's impossible to meet that standard. And plus, he has a very loving and adoring community that isn't constantly up his asshole to like uh, cut negative content. Uh, anyway, Ludwig hit the, uh, hit the classic, uh, Doug Doug, Northern Lion, Virtual, Squeaks, Fusli, Cutie, Sea Dog, Iron Mouse, Moon Moon, Tarek, Lily Pichu. There's a lot of good streamers, which is right. These guys are great. And I said jokingly hello, and everybody ate my ass, like as though we're not fucking friends. You know what I mean? He also plays video games, which is someone else's content, but gamers decided it's acceptable versus reacts, which I guess are different somehow. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, you're valid, Hassan. Don't let the bandwagon haters win. I don't think the bandwagon haters are winning anything regardless. Maybe he said that because you're too controversial. Yeah, I know. Um, so... I did not take my Pelican set up to New York City because I'm only here for two days. 
You're a pathetic excuse for a streamer. Useless leech. Well, thank you, based Magapede. I'm glad you're in here, and I hope you can stick around for a little bit longer. And, uh, you know, get to take it in fully and recognize that maybe a lot of the stuff that you see online that is uh, usually slanted in a negative way is maybe exaggerated a little bit. I think this whole React Gate 2023 has some good points, but also a lot of virtue signals that just want to jump on the hay bandwagon. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, a lot of this is directed almost entirely at XQC. I've already gone through my React Gate stuff a million times over. Um, but I still posted this regardless, just for people who... Just for people who may want the truth. There's not a lot of people who care about it, usually, online especially. Most people are just farming. Okay, but here it is. These are the only four channels that I control. Every other Hasanabi channel you see on YouTube is fan operated. I don't mind if they make money re-uploading my live streams and monetizing it for themselves. You can email or strike them if you have issues with the content they're uploading. Okay, this is what I said, which surprisingly didn't get a lot of quote retweets, so that's good. It was like non-controversial. Most people just saw it. You will not see unedited videos on my channel. A live stream on Twitch is very different than a YouTube video. I react to videos live with YouTube in mind. However, eight hours of live streaming, of course, has dead air, piss breaks, or even why one meal a day. But, of course, when people do straight VOD rips in the Hasanabi Clips Industrial Complex, because I don't care about IP, they don't, they don't end up uh, posting like an actually edited, transformative piece of work. When I make my reacts no matter what I'm reacting to, like 98% of the time, the reaction that I have to a YouTube video is done, is conducted in a way with a YouTube video in mind. It's so perfectly created so that you can like chop it and keep the parts that make sense narratively and ultimately put a reaction video up there if you want to do that. I've talked about this a lot before. Obviously, because it is... Um, because it is uh, uh, done live, there are going to be blemishes. But if you're uploading it onto YouTube where it's like directly competing with the original, for example, then yes, you have to uh, ensure that that live video is not a direct copy of the original work and is, you know, it, it, it's like worthy of being uploaded to YouTube. Um, also what the fuck Lamino hasn't said anything about react gate yet people are running heavy defense for him people on his sub are even angry that he hasn't claimed people honestly do you think the part of the clips complex who just uploaded unedited segments can be harmful with this whole new drama in mind not counting full body archive channels yes I think so too I, I agree which is why I said look if you have an issue with one of these channels then take them down because they should know better. Dude, your haters have been going wild. Even the examples they try to use themselves have been lies, which is hilarious. Caught a dude lying that you weren't even reacting to a specific video because you were looking at your phone. And when I checked the VOD, you literally added like 12 extra minutes of commentary to an 18 minute video. And that's like on the light side of your commentary because it was a second thought video. You just agree with most of it. Yeah. But again, because it is complete fallacy just shifting the responsibility of your fans while indirectly profiting the fairest way is just to react to content you have permission for first of all this is not a fallacy and you're a donkey for thinking this is a logical fallacy when it's not you just learned that word recently and thought you could just apply it here that would not be a logical fallacy you can just straight up say you're wrong for saying this you're shifting your responsibility away to your fans the reality is a lot of people just want me to also have rigorous control over my ip that's the problem. If I had more rigorous control over my IP, I wouldn't be getting all of these uh, uh, attacks. There are plenty of other streamers that also react. There are plenty. Every single person will at some point leave the camera and be away from the camera to like pick something up, whether it be delivery or to go pee. It's a normal part of the process. Um, if I did not allow fan channels to upload shit and make money for themselves, I do not make any money off of my fan channels. I do not care. As long as they link to the original video, as long as it's like edited and it's not just like bullshit, dead air. 
One of the fan channels that's doing this the most is the bot channel. I won't say anything else, but they literally upload every segment on the stream, monetized with no gaps, edited out. It's not a fan. Yeah, I know. Did you see Meat Canyon grouping you with XQC? That's kind of shocking because um, I know him. I've hung out with him a little bit, and um, I I would have. I'm surprised that he uh, he had a negative take about me like that because he's literally he's literally thanked me for watching his videos on stream before. So that is actually kind of shocking. I doubt that he did though. I don't think he did that. Um, open chat arena settings, type deleted in the search bar and check. Oh yeah. You want me to check the hide the deleted messages, right? Yeah. Cause I'm seeing a lot of people that you guys are clapping. I kind of want it. Anyway, I doubt that, I doubt that meat Canyon would uh, shit on me for that. Cause he has personally, uh, thanked me for watching his videos. Anyway. So, where was I? As far as this stuff goes, your haters are literally psychotic, man. They don't want you and just fantasize something and hate on you. It's uh, like, it's your own psychosis. I know, but when there's enough people, it doesn't matter. If enough people are pushing a narrative then that's basically the truth. It doesn't really matter what the reality is. You know what I mean? Because once again, no one is going to actually look at the situation. A really funny moment that happened is that the chair meme, originally the Hermie meme was a meme that we created in this community. And then it left the actual target market, which was inter which was like an inter-community meme. And it became something that the haters use. So because of that reason, for example, and I will tell you, a friend of the show is currently working on a massive YouTube essay. They reached out to me and said, hey, I put a chair meme, but I just realized that like the React Gate stuff is heating up again. And I, I wanted to see if you were comfortable with it. I'm probably going to take it out because I don't want you to get unnecessary heat. Literally, it, which was very nice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say who, and I'm not, after the video comes out, I'll talk about it, but it was very nice of them to literally reach out to me to be like, Hey, I was going to do this meme, but now I realize like people are just going to fucking probably use it against you. Um, some YouTuber did a streamer react tier list and he put you on F because he believes the chair shit. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, it wasn't Jay Aubrey. No. So yes, people have, rec people did recognize me at the airport, of course. So, Um, the, what I was going to say is, um, what kind of content would you make if you didn't make reaction content? I mean, I make plenty of content that is not even in the boundaries of what people consider react content or low effort content because I am, uh, for the most part doing political commentary. That's usually what I do. And even my react content is usually political commentary. 34 MKD 50. Thank you for the 50 get the subs. Um, th of course, uh, I am not a uh, simply react streamer. I am a top of the hour ad break streamer. That's what I do. I serve top of the hour ad breaks at the top of the hour, every hour. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or free with a Twitch prime. Here's the three minute ad break. Now, Lamau news punditry is literally react content. Exactly. News is react content, but even ha haters recognize it as different. Yeah. So commentary has basically been lumped with react. Yes. Uh, half of the people bitching on Twitter, not real life or even on Twitch. Don't watch any streamers, let alone react streamers. It's just popular from YouTube communities and the general public to hate on live streamers from any angle possible. Exactly. Um, 
However, is there truth to uh, what haters in the past have said, even if they've like totally uh, weaponized this against me because they just like personally hate me due to my politics or whatever? Yes, that's why I changed some of the things I used to do. Back in the day, I used to uh, I used to literally have a dual streaming setup where I would either watch it on my phone if I was away from camera or watch it in the kitchen when I used to cook. This was like three years ago at this point. And everybody everybody got very mad at that. That was the original ReactGate shit where he was like, Hassan just plays videos or whatever. And um, I would, of course, always still be reacting, but it didn't look good optically. And I stopped it. Um, there was some criticism about, it was 2021. Okay, it was two years ago. There was some criticism about how, like, I actually deliberately hide what the, uh, who the video I'm reacting to is, which wasn't true, but it doesn't matter. Um, that's the reason why when I do react to a video now, uh, I absolutely will mention who the content creator is, the link, and we'll link it in the chat. We'll pin it to the top to ensure that, like, you know, this is as ethically done as possible. Um, So all of the stuff that they're talking about with respect to me doesn't necessarily really fit the bill, but it doesn't matter because you can always, um, you can always turn around and just say, well, look, he did it back in the day and point to like uh, the, the chair memes or whatever. Um, but once again, if you, want, if you want to understand where I'm coming from here, when I watch YouTube videos on stream, the overwhelming majority is from content creators I know personally. However, there are, of course, instances where that's not the case, but the goal is to make a transformative product for YouTube. That's why my reacts often double the runtime. I pull clips from other videos. I use the content that I'm watching, okay? I use the, the videos that I'm watching to, uh, to, to build a narrative, okay? To build a narrative. I add context. I, I try to build a narrative as best as I can. And that's why I do uh, the reacts that I do. Okay. What? Active shooter. I think reaction YouTubers are those that upload them to the same service in the video aren't ethical. So I think the best way to showcase this... Wait, there's the actual congressional shootout? What the fuck's going on? Anyway, my point is... My point is... Um, I do think that there's validity to the to the uh, frustration that YouTube content creators feel with respect to what like Twitch streamers do and their uploads, which is why I try to ensure that it is done as best as possible. Okay, I try to ensure that it is as ethical as possible. There might still be there might still be issues uh, overall. But almost all of the issues often stem from fan channels that upload not like a narratively cohesive, uh, uh, not like a, like a React video that is edited, chopped down so it actually makes sense, but a React video that's slapped from the VOD, just a literal fucking, uh, you know, zero edits, just taking a, a VOD piece and just re-uploading it immediately to be first to market while simultaneously taking the thumbnail that the other content creator worked hard on and slapping my face on it. You can't do that. Like, if that's what you're doing, then yeah, you deserve to be fucking DMCA'd. Okay? If you're doing that, you deserve to be DMCA'd by every content creator that you're, uh, that you're, you're doing this for. Just because I do not have any restrictions on my IP doesn't fucking mean that you can just do that. And, and there are some channels that even Moist Critical has had issue with. Asmongold has had issue with. XQC probably hasn't had issue with, but like he, uh, you know, other podcasts have had issue with. There are certain channels out there on YouTube that literally will take every streamer's content and will re-upload it in the exact same way that I'm talking about. And they constantly, constantly get me in trouble. They get Charlie in trouble, even though most people don't yell at Charlie. Because, you know, Charlie is, is beloved and well-liked. And he's a YouTube-first content creator. 
but it is fucking ridiculous. And I've told YouTube they know about the problem and there is no way for us to be able to deal with it. So, like I said, if they're, and these are bot channels, they're not fans, they're just bot channels that are taking advantage. And they even DMCA fan channels that are actually genuinely editing videos. I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, start copy claiming fan channels. But if this keeps up, you know, it seems like uh, we're going to have to do that. And I don't want to do that because it goes against my principles. But that's what it's leading down to. It's leading down to a situation where I have to fucking start actually applying my own fucking IP rules in an effort to ensure that the stuff that's on YouTube is kosher. Reason why my main channel doesn't get slapped with fucking DMCA's unless it's like a clown who's trying to uh, be contentious or fucking make a name for themselves or some shit like that, because my main channel is not re-uploading shit. It's always in good faith. It is always a completely transformative product. So fan channels should try and follow that same principle. If they don't want to get fucking DMCA'd by other YouTubers. And there's plenty. I react to so much. Over the course of an 8-hour stream. I react to so much over the course of an 8-hour stream. You're, you're just being... Uh, you're, you're being lazy. You're, you just want to be first. You, you just want to be first to market. And you're just doing a straight VOD rip. Okay? Like, don't put me getting up, uh, don't put me not reacting to shit on a YouTube video. Cut that part out. If it's narratively important for the video to be in there, uh, for a segment to be in there, show it full screen. You know, these are pretty easy ways to, to just, like, make, like, an actual transformative product if you don't want to get DMCA'd. You know? So that's it. Isn't that point you just made an agreement with the argument that streamers stream other people's videos without actively reacting? I mean, yeah, but but that is true. That is true. If I and and sometimes streamers do, sometimes I do that too. Um if I'm doing that, usually it's like a video from a friend of mine. Like, it's second thought or something, you know what I mean? And I already agree with everything in the video. Um, and I'm using it as an educational tool, like a substitute teacher that plays a video while they're gone, making money off filler content. Yeah. And second thought certainly doesn't have an issue with that. That's, you know, a good friend of mine. And he loves it. Um, and even then, I always add, uh, you know, add additional context to it. But that's it. I saw Hasanabi at Sedell's. He is as attractive in person. Oh my god. This is the per this is the person that took photos of me uh, uh took photos with me when I was at Sedell's this morning in Soho. Anyway, but um uh, it, the irony is a lot of people that are critical of like uh xqc's uh, reactions or a lot of people that have like uh, thrown their hat in the ring i've personally reacted to tier zoo is a great example of this i know i've met them in the real world like these are not people that have an issue as far as i understand with the way i react to their videos um especially because like um one i if i'm watching a video i'm gonna make damn sure that i'm fucking you know beating it to the ground i'm i'm adding additional context or whatever and uh Usually, I will 
step away for like a brief moment to pee or whatever, you're always going to find that. But um, ultimately, that kind of stuff should not be in the re-upload. Some of these should not even be uploaded at all. Some of these videos should not be uploaded at all. And if you're a YouTuber and, uh, you know, you have an issue with one of these fan channels, because I doubt that it's going to be, what is this? <laughs> yeah, if you're a YouTuber and if you have any uh, issues with any of these fan channels, like reach out to them. They always have an email or just fucking straight DMCA them. I follow Tirso on Twitter. He's kind of miffed by this whole new wave of react drama on the side of the streamers being shit, but it's in the context of XCC and not you, so I don't know. Seems to have changed his stance on it recently. No, Tirzu was always critical of, uh, of people reacting. That's how I originally uh, started talking to him. But, um, you know, there's varying degrees of, of commentary on this. The most common one I see is that people do recognize that React content, for the most part, is actually helpful for the video. Um, uh, but if it's on the same exact platform, if it's on YouTube as well, and you're literally taking someone's thumbnail and slapping your fucking face on it, then yeah, of course, that's bullshit. I agree. Okay, it's giving slay. Thank you, guys. Um, one other thing that I was thinking about, one other thing that I was thinking about is, uh, also, uh, as far as like the final aspect of the react gate, cause I, I think about this stuff all the time. I don't want to, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, content creators. Um, and, uh, I think that if it's a smaller content creator, or like a mid-sized content creator and they just made like a big ass YouTube video. I think me reacting to that immediately is not a good thing. As long as it's an older video, I'm fine with it because it does uh, have a tendency to give it more life. But if it's like side by side and then some fucking con uh, some uh, bot channel literally sees that rips the react, no matter how complimentary it is. Okay. And by the way, tears is a, uh, shit hasn't changed at all exactly i don't know why you guys are saying this but as long as it's not um as long as it's not directly fucking ripping the video that they're doing ripping the thumbnail whatever and like pushing the original content creator off the fucking algorithm it should be fine but yeah here's tier zoo's uh take on it they can't keep getting away with a YouTube video, lazy reaction or YouTube who spends months on that video. For what it's worth, I enjoy having my content reacted to. I like seeing people laugh at the jokes and marvel at the shocking moments. If you're a react streamer and you genuinely engage in my content, by all means, watch it with your chat. The issue is when it becomes obvious that the streamers are exploiting my content to fill time or give themselves a break. When they're engaged with something else as the video plays, whether it's eating their dinner or answering text messages or whatever. And lastly, of course, do not re-upload an unedited VOD of the reaction to YouTube is just not cool. Yeah. Old Tearzoo mentioning you. Yeah, oh, here it is. This is perfect. Exactly. Neither. I just don't want to start B with XC and that's his actual channel. These clip channels aren't owned by Asan, but since Asan and I know each other, I feel comfortable at least asking. I'm not going to copy strike anyone myself, though. Nothing to do with politics. Yeah, I, I have done that, by the way. And, and uh, I've talked to Tirzu personally. A lot of these people, uh, a lot of these content creators, for the record, that, I, uh, that are like anti-React Gate or a part of the React Gate discourse right now, I have talked to in the past. And I have personal communications with in the past. So if there's any kind of like... Um, if there's any kind of issue, like I, I will immediately take care of it, but it's rarely ever. I see now. So if you try to help a little guy, a small time streamer, the bot will try to steal all the views while monetizing. I get it now. That's terrible. Yes. Uh, 
Um, so that is a uh, frustrating uh, thing that happens. But the uh, the irony or the hilarity of it is that like YouTubers themselves oftentimes have like a more nuanced perspective on the matter, right? And yet the people that ride or die for these conversations are oftentimes not content creators themselves. They're just fans that that have like this incredible point of view on it where they're like, this is the most immoral thing that you could possibly do. And they're especially geared by some YouTubers who do have a very strong opinion on this. Uh, YouTubers I will not be naming, but YouTubers I've never personally reacted to ever or knew about even. That's it. 